Uh, my work uh, over the years has taken many forms, but it's, it's really only been about one thing, and that thing is what I call the mythic potential of science. And uh, that's based on uh, two sort of truisms, uh, I believe. And the first is that uh, myth is neither lies, uh, fairy tales, or superstitions, nor is it history, truth, and fact. Myth is art. It's the picture of the world, the poem of the world that uh, the movie of the world that we all hold in our minds and, and gives us sort of a sense of place and, and belonging and uh, allows us to understand the world. And, and that understanding is not, as um, many people believe, myth is not based on our ignorance of the world and how it works, but actually on our understanding of the world and how it works. And uh, today, that understanding is scientific. And uh, we are presently in the midst of a huge scientific and technological revolution. And it's going to demand a revolution in our mythic ideas of the world. And science will not replace religion, which is simply a model of mythology, but will inform a new mythology. And I'm not even suggesting that we should do this or we shouldn't do this. What I'm saying is that we will do this. Uh, to ask humans not to mythologize their world, not to have a mythic picture of the world in their minds, is, is like asking them not to dream in their sleep. It just simply will happen. So what I'm doing in my work is, is uh, oftentimes taking um, symbols and, and uh, objects that we understand intuitively and, and building pieces that, that deal with that new scientific understanding of the planet. Conceptually, they're all based on the same idea. And uh, some of them are, are uh, sort of abstract representations of galaxies. And, uh, you know, um, the stomach still believes that the world is flat and we're standing still, but science tells us that you know, we're living in this expanding universe and we're flying at thousands of kilometers per second. And not only are we flying at thousands of kilometers per second, but everything around us is on fire as we're doing it. It's like this huge circus act, right? Trapeze act. And uh, intuitively, we, we don't really understand that. So uh, the galaxies aren't, my galaxies aren't made of stars, they're made out of feathers. Um, because intuitively we understand what a feather is. A feather is for flying. You know, it's beautiful, but it's the, the purpose of a feather is not to be beautiful. The purpose of a feather is to fly. And so by taking that uh, Im image or, or iconic image of a feather and relating that to flight and using that to build a galaxy is... is uh, is a visual way to represent that, uh, that scientific uh, discovery, that scientific understanding of our place in the universe. The language, scientific language, is mathematics. And many physicists uh, argue that the mathematics can't be literally translated into a picture of th the real world. And that may be true, but it will be translated. And that translation will be through art and myth. Uh, we live in a world that's dominated by science and technology. And the only way forward is for humans to have some kind of connection, to have some kind of understanding of how this works. And that explanation will be art.